And now um, I'd like to do, introduce Dr. Gary Stanton, who's a neurologist at Emerson Hospital, and he's going to be discussing acupuncture. So tell me, Dr. Stanton, if I have facial pain, why would I want you to put needles in my face? Because it might help. Oh, it might, it might take help. it away. Okay. Thank you very much. Next slide, please. Um, I don't see my slide here. All right. Uh, hello, Doctor. Do you happen to see it in the top left corner? In the top left corner? No. Um, don't see it at all. Okay. One second. All right. Well, what is currently on your screen? Well, I see the um, looks like the prior talk: trigeminal neuralgia, introduction, recognition, diagnosis, treatment. In the upper left-hand corner, I see you, the moderator, and in the upper right, I see myself. I don't see my slides. When you uh, when you hover over the bottom of the screen, you happen to see an HD button, and is that selected? The bottom of the screen. Yes, I see that. I click yeah. that. Yep. Please click that. All right. Thank you very much. No problem. So um, I will be talking today about acupuncture. Um, the uh, acupuncture is um, an increasingly valued form of therapy for a variety of conditions, um, mainly because it, it often is helpful, but also it's relatively safe. Um, more and more insurance companies are now accepting acupuncture. I, I live and work in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts in just the past uh, couple of years, our Medicaid insurance, which is called Mass Health, has begun to cover acupuncture. And now for the first time this year in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, um, Medicare is covering acupuncture services for treatment of uh, lumbar pains. And so more and more we see in our um, Medicare uh, insurances and also other private insurances uh, coverage for acupuncture. There are many good schools of, of acupuncture to train licensed acupuncturists and more and more medical schools are training physicians as was my case. So I think that in the future, I hope to see more acupuncture um, applied for trigeminal neuralgia in addition to other conditions. Today, I'll be talking about uh, acupuncture with, with two considerations. First, I'll talk about acupuncture from its, the point of view of its history, what we would call traditional acupuncture. And then uh, I will go on to uh, the idea of what are called microsystems. So traditional acupuncture, um, of course, acupuncture is, is very old. It's at least 2,500 years old, some say more. And it's most famous for its development in ancient China. Although in other parts of the world, acupuncture points were recognized, but never reached the, the apogee of development as we've seen in China. I don't speak Chinese, but I'm told that the Chinese words for acupuncture can be translated as treatment by needles and heating. Uh, to give you an introduction to the conceptualization of acupuncture, I'll say it's based on an understanding of health and disease, which is reflected in identifiable patterns of harmony and disharmony, which in biomedical terms, we can loosely translate as health and disease. Um, an advanced conceptualization of an order of the universe, given the name Tao, which is manifested through energy, which is generally translated by the word chi, and the polarities of chi, yin and yang. Next slide, please. How does a traditional acupuncturist approach acupuncture and therapy? Well, there's a consideration of human beings as seen living in an environment between heaven and earth, with heaven and earth each bringing its respective energies and influences. We can all relate to that because we can all understand how a very hot day might affect us one way and a very cold day might affect us another way. Um, 
So this is an integral part of the consideration of acupuncture. Then patterns of disharmonies in human beings are considered to be manifested in their symptoms, which is how we feel. In this case, today, we're talking about trigeminal neuralgia, facial pain, and also in clinical science. That's what a, a therapist or physician might identify on examining a patient. In the case of acupuncture, such as changes in the pulse, changes in the appearance of the face, the tongue and abdomen, and also changes in the reactivity of the skin points, which are called acupuncture points, which are localized on what are called meridians or channels on the body's surfaces and are, are in, in, in theoretical terms, in traditional terms, are felt to be conduits of energy. Um, although we all value the therapist who can treat disease and, and help us with our symptoms, in ancient China, the, the, the greatest emphasis and admiration was given to those who could help prevent disease. Next slide, please. Once a pattern of disharmony is recognized, then harmony or health may be restored by a method of placing most commonly thin, sterile needles in selected skin acupuncture points. Sometimes the points are massaged or heated. This goes back to the notion of the definition of acupuncture as treatments by needles and heating. Traditionally, the points might be warmed by, by burning a small um, plant leaves, which is called moxa. Another message here, though, is that many people who hear the word acupuncture reel back or recoil, thinking well, I, the idea of having needles placed into me is an anathema. Well, the message is that it's possible to treat acupuncture points in non-needling methods. In, in acupuncture theory, treating body surface points will affect the relative, the relative balance of yin, that should be yin and yang, and the movement of other constructs, which are called qi, blood, essence, and fluids, and ultimately aims to restore the harmony or health to the body of the underlying solid organs with a capital O and hollow viscera with a capital V. And I wrote here as defined by traditional Chinese medicine, because um, it's important to understand that the traditional concept of organs and viscera um, um, in ancient China and as practiced now by traditional acupuncturists is different from the concepts of organs and viscera as conceived in biomedicine. So it's not quite the same. Next slide, please. So here I gave you one illustration of acupuncture points and, and meridians that's seen on the left side of the screen. Um, the, the meridians or, or energetic channels on which these um, roughly 361 traditional acupuncture points are located are, um, are given um, names. In this case, you see I, I put a point on the hand, the back of the hand of, of this subject. Um, the LI stands for large intestine. It's the large intestine meridian. And, and the different points are given numbers. So in this case, it's large intestine four. If you take a look at that meridian, follow that line up the arm heading up to the shoulder, you'll see that that meridian is thought to also have an energetic connection to the face. So this is one example of an acupuncture point, a traditional acupuncture point, which when stimulated, perhaps by a needle, perhaps even by massage or other types of uh, stimulations that might benefit somebody who has facial pain. And in fact, that's a point that if a, a person with trigeminal neuralgia is having a spate of pains, um, that's a point that one might gently massage. Um, it's at right there at the base of the thumb and index finger on the back of the hand in that fleshy area, gently massaging that might possibly help um, uh, neuralgic pains in the face. On the right side of the screen, I, I also indicated some facial points. Typically with, with traditional acupuncture, local points, in this case being in the face, might be combined with what are called distal points as in that large intestine four point on the left side of the screen. Uh, these points uh, were um, part of a protocol um, that was published by a Chinese acupuncturist, you can see the reference at the bottom, Dr. Lu Shaoji, in the Handbook of Acupuncture in the Treatment of Nervous System Diseases from 2002. Next slide, please. Acupuncture microsystems um, is a relatively newer development in, in acupuncture, although um, the, ears, the ear itself, the skin of the ear itself was not included um, uh, to contain traditional acupuncture points. 
uh, traditionally, even the ancient Chinese would sometimes treat an ear point um, for isolated uh, symptomatic purposes. But in more modern times, a conception of the ear um, as a focal treatment of, um, of a focal localization of a variety of acupuncture points has been uh, developed, along with other so-called microsystems. So here on the slide, you see ear acupuncture is mentioned. It was developed in France. But there were others, too. The scalp acupuncture that was developed in, in China and, and Japan. There's a well-known Korean hand acupuncture uh, system. And, but the French system of ear acupuncture is a little special because it was developed in the West as opposed to most of the other systems which came out of Asia. The, in France, the method that was systematized roughly um, 70 years ago was named auricular therapy. And the doctor who uh, created this system was a physician. So in the French approach, it's guided by biomedical treatment principles. Later on, when word of this advance in microsystems with ear acupuncture was published in Asia, um, Chinese acupuncturists looked into it, agreed with it, but modified it to be given it in traditional terms. So the way a, a Chinese acupuncturist might treat ear points might be similar, but it also might be somewhat different from the way uh, a French physician or someone trained in, in this French style might, uh, might uh, treat the ear. Next slide, please. Ear acupuncture can be defined as a therapeutic method aimed at treating patients by the physical stimulation of reflex sites in the oracle of the ear. The word oracle refers to this, the visible, fleshy, external part of the ear, um, including even the earlobe. But in auricular therapy, the ear canal that leads inside uh, into the eardrum, that's not treated. So all the treatments is around the skin of the ear, but not deep inside the ear. Next slide. Uh, here is the famous doctor, Dr. Paul Nogier, who developed this system. Uh, as with traditional acupuncture, auricular therapy or ear acupuncture has, is now recognized worldwide. There are international symposia and congresses. This is very, very well known. In the United States, um, a famous protocol called battlefield acupuncture has been looked at by the Pentagon. It's being taught to um, health uh, therapists, health care workers in the, in, in the military. Uh, Paul Nogier uh, in the 1950s observed patients who had a specific ear traditional point that was performed by a non-physician, a woman whose name was Madame Barra, uh, for patients with sciatica. He thought about her treatment and then from it expanded uh, a whole new system which he named auricular therapy that means treatment by the ear. Next slide, please. This is a drawing of Dr. made by Dr. Nogier and uh, this shows something quite striking. Uh, you can see that over the ear, Dr. Nogier theorized that there are parts of the ear that might relate to actually parts of the body. This is what in medicine we would call somatotopic organization. The soma refers to the body and topic refers to a map. So a map of, of corresponding body points to the, the structure of, of a part of the body. Well, the principle of somatotopic organization in the nervous system, especially in, in, the, in the brain, but also spinal cord, is very well recognized. And somatotopic organization is a fundamental fact of neurophysiology. What's different or interesting about what Dr. Nogier did is that he theorized that the same type of somatotopic organization, which is found in the brain, for example, is also represented on the ear. It, his theory is the basis of the clinical approach to auricular therapy. Next slide, please. So the biomedical theoretical basis of auricular therapy can be summarized this way, that many nerve cells in the brain, but also the spinal cord, which process pain, have multiple nerve con connect connection inputs and outputs. Nervous system is very complicated, many different connections. The skin of the ear, as it turns out, has a particularly rich innervation, including the trigeminal nerve, with diverse connections to the brain and spinal cord. Where nerves connect, those points are called synapses, and synapses often have a quality of what's called plasticity in neurophysiology, um, where there might be dynamic influences on the, on the connectivity of one nerve with another that can be modified or modulated by different methods, different inputs. In auricular therapy, and I think more broadly in acupuncture, 
it's theorized that the stimulation of ear acupuncture points, as well as other body acupuncture points, may affect the activity of pain processing nerve cells and their connections, thereby modulating them to diminish the pain experience and to promote healing and repair. So in, in, in the field particularly of um, auricular therapy, but even modern um, uh, uh, acupuncture, we also have neurophysiological explanations that serves as a some contrast to the more traditional explanations for the, the, the function and, 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 and way to conceptualize traditional acupuncture. Next slide, please. So um, in the book that was published, I hope that you've um, received it and, and, and will read it, Facial Pain, the 21st Century Guide, I was asked to write a brief uh, synopsis on auricular therapy or acupuncture in the treatment of trigeminal neuralgia. And in that um, brief chapter, I, I mentioned a woman who came to me. She's, this is, um, this is the, um, the approach that I used in treating her facial pain. She was 40 years old. She was a nurse, and she had had a 15-year history of right cheek or maxillary paroxysmal pain, sudden pains that were fairly severe, 8 to 9 over 10, that were triggered by touching her cheek on that side or sucking on a straw or even on exposure to cold wind. She had tried the usual medications such as carbamazepine. The problem was she couldn't tolerate them. Um, it made her, her, her drowsy and her voice became a little slurred and, uh, and she worked answering the telephone, so that just didn't work out. So she wanted a, something different, non-medical treatment. And so I gave her this particular treatment, the little, the little um, marks indicate the points treated. And in this particular case, in her case, she told me that she had a 90% relief of pain. She was able to stop all medication. I want to call your attention on this slide to the area of the earlobe. And if you look to, that, to, to, to the left side of that earlobe area, you'll see a, a spot right at the, the back edge of the earlobe that's labeled V2 trigeminal maxillary division point. So re remember that the somatotopic organization is that of an inverted, inverted human being, uh, actually a fetal proportion. So, so that point would correspond to uh, a point of the uh, V2 trigeminal division. Just above it, uh, on that back part of the earlobe, would be V3, and just below it would be V1. So here's another thing that one can try if, 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 if someone has a facial neuralgia, having a lot of pain, one can try gently massaging that back part of the earlobe right in that area. There's a chance that even gentle massage might help to, to, to diminish some of the pains and maybe even help to squash a, a flare-up. There's a chance that it could. Next slide, please. Um, ear acupuncture commonly is given with, with needle therapy, as with other forms of acupuncture here. You have standard needles that are placed in points of the ear. Next slide. And in France, D Dr. Noji had developed a special needle. The needle is contained in the very tip of that little injector. You, you might see it um, just, uh, just there. Uh, in, in the narrowing, tapering part of that canister. It's a two millimeter needle with a mini barb at the end. And so when it's put into the skin, it doesn't fall out right away. If you look at the image on the right, the ear on the right, up the very top of the ear, you'll see it, it's very uppermost point, the helix. One of those little needles have been placed. Those are called ASP needles. A the difference there in the French approach is the patient goes home with that needle in place so instead of being in the point just for 20 to 40 minutes, as in a typical traditional treatment, that needle might stay in for days, even weeks, as long as it's tolerated, bringing a therapeutic stimulation to that point for a far greater period of time. Next slide, please. Um, this is the last slide, and uh, it's just to show you that a lot of research is being done in acupuncture in general, but as well in, in ear acupuncture. A lot of the research is coming out of Asia, particularly uh, China, Korea, Japan, but also more and more research is coming out of the United States, Europe, and, um, and, and South America, Australia. Uh, and so there's a lot of movement in this direction. We want, we think of uh, acupuncture as an evidence-based medicine. It's recognized as such by the World Health Organization and by the National Institutes of Health, but we need more literature um, more, more validation of the different types of treatment protocols that we can bring to help patients with trigeminal neuralgia and other types of problems. This is, this is just to show you that 
more and more work is being done to review available literature to try to see um, how well we are approaching the, and fulfilling the goal of having acupuncture as an evidence-based medicine.